Save us from the wrath of the Vikings, Lord. Such prayers were popular in Europe in the 8th through 10th centuries. What made Europeans tremble in front of these legendary desperate sailors who have gained a reputation for brutal murderers and reckless adventurers? In this video, we learn about the Vikings, their military campaigns, and their epoch. The Vikings, the reasons and background of their marches. Vikings, or Normans, were referred to as seafarers and pirates from among the old Norwegians, Swedes, and Danes. Factors that contributed to the appearance of Vikings. 1. The predominance of mountains, forests, and marshes in Scandinavia has led to a shortage of fertile land. Only 3% of Norway and 9% of Sweden were used for agriculture. Crop failures, famine, and land shortages have produced large numbers of people willing to take risks and become Vikings. 2. The disintegration of the family ancestral community of the Scandinavian tribes led to the emergence of princely power and aristocrats, called earls, who were sometimes in opposition to the new rulers and were forced to flee the slaughter of their military units. 3. The dispersion of the islands and a large number of fjords in Scandinavia made boats the main means of transportation for the Vikings. The Scandinavians were among the first to equip their ships with an adjustable sail, which, combined with the small tonnage and the presence of paddles, made them the fastest sea transport of the time. In addition to light, improved boats, the Vikings also invented the compass that made it easier for them to navigate the sea. The noses of their fighting ships were decorated with the dragon's head. That's why we call their ships Drakkar. 4. Faith in Valhalla, a Norse paradise, further stimulated the bravery and recklessness of the Vikings. It was possible to get to Valhalla only after a heroic death in battle. The most daring and furious Viking warriors were called berserkers. Viking Expansion in the British Isles The first direction of the Viking expedition was the British Isles. In 793, the Normans robbed and burned down St. Cuthbert's Monastery on the coast of Northumbria. Churches and monasteries, which held many treasures, especially attracted Scandinavian raiders, as they were pagans and did not respect foreign relics. In 795, the Vikings attacked Mayo in Ireland, and five years later they colonized the Orkney and Shetland Islands, which for centuries became their secure rear base. At first, the Vikings trivially looted the territory, taking gold, jewels, and slaves, and then, whenever possible, establishing their authority in the occupied territories. Until the middle of the 9th century, the Vikings captured most of Ireland, divided its lands into several principalities, and founded Dublin in 841. It was not until 1014 that the Irish overcame the Scandinavian domination after the victorious but bloody battle of Clontarf in which the legendary king of Ireland, Brian Boru, died. In 865, the sons of the Danish chief Ragnar Lodbrok landed in Northumbria and conquered it for a year. The local king Aiel was cut in the ribs and sentenced to a slow death in agony. Then the Viking army captured the kingdom of East Anglia in 870, and by 874 had conquered almost all of Mercia. Feudal wranglings and short-sighted selfishness prevented the rulers of England from uniting to confront the invaders. In the conquered territory, the Normans often behaved in a particularly brutal manner, burning villages, taking local residents into slavery, raping women, and executing men to intimidate the population. Only Wessex King Alfred the Great was able to mobilize the southern Anglo-Saxons and stop the Viking advance by diplomatic and military means. According to the Treaty of Wedmore, 878, southwest England was under the rule of Alfred, while the northeast was under the rule of the Danes. It was called Danelaw. In the middle of the 9th century, Alfred's descendants managed to defeat the Vikings and retake Danelaw. The restless Normans returned several decades later, and in 991 they won the Battle of Malden. In 1013, the King of Norway and Denmark, Swain Forkbeard, led by a huge army, captured England and made the English king flee abroad in panic. On the conquered lands, Swain raised taxes and brutally strangled the opposition, not hesitating to even slaughter monks. 
During a strenuous struggle in 1016, Swain's son, Knut the Great, ascended to the English throne. And soon, in 1018, he became simultaneously the Danish king. In 1028, Knut led the Anglo-Danish fleet, which contained 50 large ships, to capture Norway. Thus, he became the ruler of the Three Kingdoms, and his state went down in history as the Empire of the North Sea. Viking Campaigns in the French Kingdom the Frankish kingdom was one of the first to suffer from Viking raids. In 810, the Danes robbed Friesland, in 825, coasts of Brittany, and in 830, coasts of Neustria. Louis the Pious' wars with his sons resulted in the division of the kingdom into three parts and the weakening of its military power. This was exactly what the Danes took advantage of, who, after the death of this emperor, made camp at the mouth of the Loire and the Seine, in 845, the legendary Ragnar Lodbrok, with his army of 7,000 men, robbed the coast of the Seine and, after the siege, captured and stripped Paris to the brim. In 885, the Vikings again tried to gain the capital of future France, but this time the Franks managed to buy their way out with 7,000 pounds of silver. Until the early 10th century, the Franks had to pay these northern pirates up to 120,000 pounds of silver. King Charles III of the Franks decided to lure some Vikings to his side, and in 911 concluded the Treaty of saint clair sur epte with the Viking warlord Rollo. Under this treaty, the latter became the king's son-in-law and inherited the territories of northern Neustria and eastern Brittany, which became the Duchy of Normandy. In return, Rollo became the king's vassal and was to protect the Franks' northern borders from Viking invasions. South Crusades of the Vikings The speed and maneuverability of the Drakkar allowed the Vikings to travel as far as the African coast or Constantinople. Sometimes these visits were commercial, sometimes military and burglarious. So in 844, the Danes, led by Hastin, came out of the mouth of the Loire, sailed along the north and east coast of the Iberian Peninsula, robbed the Asturian coast, and at the very end of the journey, unexpectedly and brazenly captured Lisbon and Sevilla, which were under the rule of the Emirate of Cordoba. Fourteen years later, the same horde of Vikings, along with the same commander, plundered the Balearic Islands, the coast of Tuscany, and Venice. During the siege of the Roman city Luni in 861, the Vikings went into a subtle ruse, asking the townspeople to baptize the leaders of the campaign, and then asking them to bury these fake dead Vikings on the territory of the city cemetery. A group of Vikings managed to enter the city in coffins, where they began a massacre in the middle of the farewell ceremony, and eventually captured the city. The Expansion into Eastern Europe Rather old was the history of relations between the Vikings, mainly the Swedes, and their eastern neighbors. As early as the end of the 8th century, Slavic residents of Ladoga and Swedish merchants established active trade contacts. Over time, trade contacts developed between the Vikings and the Slavs, who at that time lived around Kiev. The weakness of these small state Slavic formations allowed Viking Rurik in 862 to conquer Ladoga, and his relative Oleg in 882 has grasped Kiev, having killed local princes Oskold and Deer. Having acquired Kiev, Oleg made it the capital of the newly formed state, Kievan Rus. Oleg's state included possessions of Slovenes, Krivices, Dregoviches, Severians, and Polands. The ambitions of this Viking extended to the south. Therefore, in 907, he made a successful campaign against Byzantium, besieged Constantinople, achieved a profitable peace treaty, and symbolically nailed his shield to the gates of Constantinople. Having established themselves in Kiev, the Vikings mingled with the local Slavic population. Grandson Rurik bore the Slavic name Sviatoslav and was as active as his grandpa in conquering. In 965 to 967, he made a great campaign to the Volga and the Caspian Sea, at the same time having subdued Vyadiches, Mordvins, Volga Bulgaria, and Alans. Also, he has destroyed and robbed the powerful Khazars. In 968, Sviatoslav, acting as a nominal ally of Byzantium, grasped Bulgaria. In 969, the Grand Prince of Kiev took Byzantine Thrace and forced himself to fight on two fronts. 
Before 971, the Byzantines and their Bulgarian allies inflicted several defeats on the inhabitants of Kievan Rus and forced them to retreat from the Balkans. Vikings' Discovery of the New World The unification of Norway by drastic measures, which made Harald I. Fairhair, led many opposition-minded Vikings to seek new homes. In 874, a group of settlers led by Ingolfer Arnarsson sailed the Norwegian Sea, settled in Iceland, and began colonizing the island with Normans. For centuries, Iceland has been a gathering place for free thinkers and outcasts from Scandinavia, as well as a center of democracy with a popularly elected parliament, the Althingi. In 982, Viking Eric the Red, who had been banished from Iceland for five years for murder, went west with his party and discovered a little-known island at the time. He called the area Greenland, and on his return to Iceland, Eric organized the relocation of all who wished to the open territory, where the Icelanders established several colonies. Eric's son Leif was filled with a thirst for adventure and discovery, and so in the year 1000, he and his team went west. For two years, a Viking detachment led by Leif Erikson managed to visit Heluland, Baffin Island, Markland, Labrador Peninsula, as well as land and establish a colony on Vinland, Newfoundland Island. Thus, the Vikings were the first Europeans to visit America. Viking Trade Scandinavian sailors were famous not only for their plundering and conquest raids, but also for their merchant skills. They traded throughout Europe and were reliable intermediaries between many of the old world markets. In northern Scandinavia, they bought walrus fangs and reindeer antlers for jewelers in the British Isles and the Iberian Peninsula. From Sweden and the Frankish Kingdom, the Vikings brought quality cold weapons to all of Europe. Ireland and Rus in the 9th and 10th centuries were the main territories where pagan Vikings took prisoners or bought slaves for the Arab markets of the Mediterranean. Instead, the Scandinavians brought spices, silk, and satin fabrics, and fine jewelry from Muslim countries. One of the most famous routes in the 10th and 11th centuries was the route from the Varangians to the Greeks. The Vikings transported fur, honey, wax, amber, and slaves to Byzantium. Back they brought wine, jewelry, glass, and gems. The high intensity of the Viking trade with southern Europe and the Near East is indicated by the discovery of treasures on the island of Gotland, among which there were more than 26,000 Arab coins from the 8th to 11th centuries. Summary The harsh living conditions and the lack of an effective mobile army in neighboring states pushed many Scandinavians from the 8th to 11th centuries into maritime plunder and military expansion. For almost three centuries, the Vikings have brought horror to the inhabitants of all of Europe, regularly seizing and pillaging such large cities as Paris, London, Lisbon, and Sevilla. Over time, some Normans moved from pillaging to conquering new territories, so they conquered Orkney and Shetland Islands, part of modern England and Ireland, and Normandy. They also founded Kievan Rus and conquered the English kingdom. They explored and colonized Iceland, Greenland, and Newfoundland, visited Baffin Island, and were the first Europeans to visit America.